Hey, this is Joey Cape from Rag Wagon, and you're listening to Rock. You're watching Wheeler's Weekend Jams, live and direct. Wheeler's Weekend Jams, live and direct. Ladies and gentlemen, Wheeler's Weekend Jams, live and direct, and I'm sitting here on the, the tour bus of Joey from Lag Wagon. How you doing, sir? Good. Thank you so much for, uh, hey for joining us here. Uh, congratulations, uh, Fat Records, their 25th anniversary tour. Um, yeah. How has this tour been going so far, and how special do you feel to be a part <laughs> of Fat Records? Tour's been great. Um, it's you know it hasn't been going that long. It's and actually overall it's uh, it's it's too short. I think it's too short. That's the only gripe that I would have because I think all in all there's something like ten shows and they're spread out over a long period of time. We have shows on the nights, the days off, we actually have regular shows. Um, I think it could have been like a month, you know? And it, but the, yeah, it's, it's super fun. Uh, I mean, we're touring with, you know, a very large family, you know? It's like we know everybody on the tour and we're all friends and it's, uh, and, and I think it's a really good show. It's a show that I like to watch. Today I didn't see much though. <laughs> Damn it was it. an early start. It's okay. Yeah, but, one of those. Uh, but yeah, it's real good, real good. So was it worth giving uh, giving Fat Mike your demo tape back in the day? <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. That was uh, that might have been one of my better choices in life. Mm -hmm. Good thing. And uh, I've heard you guys have been playing your 1994 release uh, Trashed album on this we uh, are. record. Uh, yeah. Uh, was that? Did you guys plan that before this tour happened, or? Um, uh, it was kind of weird. We weren't planning to do it, and then uh, somebody at the label and somebody else involved in the tour asked us if we'd be willing to play a record. And, and we've been kind of planning for a long time. Uh, you know, all these bands have been doing this for ages. And a long time ago, we were talking about maybe doing all of Haas or all of Trash or both, and doing like two nights, you know, where we do one album, the next album, and a bunch of other songs. Um, so when they asked us, it was like, we really only have to brush up on like two songs. Like, I think we can say yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was indifferent to it. But it's funny, now that we're doing it, you come to the realization that that album is 23 years old. And some of the people in the audience, you know, don't really know it. Maybe even some weren't born when we made it. And so there's that weird kind of uh, epiphany one day that you have, you know, where you realize, I don't know maybe we should p be playing newer music um, but the people that that have been fans for a long time that like the record are really psyched you can see i mean yeah. overall it's fine yeah it's just we we do the record and then we have time for two more and uh Plus you know it's, i'm letting it out of the bag but it doesn't really matter because we've already been doing it but we'll do like a no use for a name song nice. and people go nuts no, like a newer one you know or, yeah. or a song people know and then we'll do this song called May 16th of ours, which is much newer than Trash, and uh, that's kind of when everything explodes. So, <laughs> we're like, hmm. hmm. But, you know, whatever. Interesting. We're seeing it through. Yeah. I mean, people people like it. The people that know the record, you know, will come up to me afterwards and go, fuck, that was awesome, you know, but yeah. I just kind of, I don't know. We have a lot of songs. Exactly. But in 45 minutes, you know, the reality is, even if you make a set, it's really difficult to make a 45 minute set when you have as many songs as we have that's where you don't feel like you're compromising, you know? Exactly. You just to cover all the bases, so. In a way, it's cool. You just have the freedom to do it, man, it's all good. Yeah. Um, and actually, speaking of freedom, you guys have been on uh, Fat Records, uh, you know, since back in the day, and how is that, how's that freedom being on uh, Fat Records, um, how does that, affect you guys personally being on a label like Fat Records because I think you know a lot of bands some there's troubles with labels and a lot of bands are not on labels they're doing it themselves and yeah especially now yeah exactly um, I mean we're just as lucky as can be and it's the reality of it is that we've had about as fortunate uh, and easy of a career as any band can have I mean we've been on the same label the whole history of the band uh, with the exception of a couple years before the label existed that we existed. Mm -hmm. um, and 
there's never been any drama. They don't ask us to do anything. We do whatever we want. They support us unconditionally. They're all very close friends of mine over the years. Some people have come and gone, but these are the people that I hang out with at home. I live in the same city. We drink together and hang out. Go bowling or see movies. You know, they're my friends. Mm -hmm. Uh, and some of my closest friends are the owners of the label, of course, you know, and so I, I you know, I, I just can't imagine, you know, especially with all the horror stories, like you're saying, that I've heard, I don't think there could be a better situation. You know, I, label has not been an issue for me in my life. Mm -hmm. That's weird. <laughs> That's <laughs> unusual. Yeah, yeah. We're, yeah, we're, we're fortunate. Um, now, you were talking, we were talking about before uh, you had your solo stuff. Is that with Fat Records as well? It is now. It is now. Okay. Yeah, I I did a number of things with that. I think when I first did a record, the first thing I did was a split with Tony Sly that Fat put out. Yeah. And that was just us covering our band, so I didn't really consider that to be anything more than just like, hey, I'll try this out. I always had written songs on an acoustic guitar, so it was like, I mean, I could have just went and found the original demo that I made of it and just said, well, here you go. <laughs> but I, I redid the song added more instruments and blah, blah, blah. But uh, when I finally decided that it was kind of a rite of passage and that I should, as a songwriter, be able to do a, an actual record and play shows, mm -hmm. which was terrifying to me, and I wasn't sure that it was a really good thing to do um, as far as, you know, just, I don't know, I just didn't know how it would be viewed. And uh, But when I did decide to do it, I tried to kind of keep it separated from the rest of my life in music, so I, I went with a different label and and went for more of a label that does indie rock, you know, kind of stuff. And uh, and it was cool, uh, but that kind of faded. And then I, I did. Then I decided, well, I know how to do this. I've had a record label before, and I, I can just self-release like everybody else in the world is now. You know, so I started doing that, which was kind of a pleasure because you know just having total control of that from the writing to the studio at my house to just it was just like now I'm just making records and going hey here you go yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I can price them differently and I'll, you know I don't have any distributors so <laughs> it's kind of an issue but I did that for a number of years and it, and it was really fun I could just do anything I wanted and I didn't have to abide by any kind of timeline for you know labels have other bands mm -hmm, right? exactly so it was very cool, but there was a point where I had three or four records like that, and uh, it, it's it's a lot of work, it turns out, mm -hmm. if you're one person and you don't have money to hire people. And with my touring schedule, I found that I was just sort of disappointing people all the time. You know, I'd get all these orders, and they build up, and then I'd be like, God, this sucks, because I'm a good guy, and, I, and I'm a very, like, responsible person. And how do I explain it over and over to this kid? Well, I'm in Japan, and... I'm going to be able to ship your record. I think I get home in three months from the next three tours in a row or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. then I'd be like calling my wife and going, can you just go down into the basement and wrap up? You know, and then she started doing it for a while. But she's busy. And I finally one day just called Fat Mike and I said, I've got five records. It was five at that point. Do you want to just take them for Fat? Like, I don't want anything. I'll just give you it, it, they're all done yeah, yeah and he was like fuck yeah. yeah so you know we made it some announcement <laughs> that was sort of funny it was like all oh, Joey's stuff is on fat now and all these people were like wow I've never even seen this <laughs> you know it's like yeah. much better choice and since then I've been able to just focus on what I like so it's it, yeah. everything I've ever done is on fat now mm -hmm. except for maybe one record one record there you go you could also call fat as P H A T, pretty hot and tempting. Right. Fat records. Uh, we yeah, actually hip hop stuff. We <laughs> yeah. try to stay away from that, man. Yeah. Uh, Go tell Fat Mike that. And see what he does. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be like, whatever, dude. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Don't say that. Uh, la yeah, last year um, when I spoke to you at Riot Fest, uh, we were talking about how everything's digital now. Um, mm -hmm. Are you still recording your uh, solo stuff on cassette tapes? Hmm. <laughs> Actually, uh, I have a friend that lives in Indonesia, and um, he releases just about everything that I do, uh, well he has uh, released most of the things that I do, and he's now starting to release some things that I produce on cassette, 
in you know Malaysia and places where, believe it or not, they still buy cassettes a lot. And it, let me just temper that with when I say a lot, I mean like you know you can press a hundred and they'll sell. I mean you don't make any money. It's just yeah. all I get out of it is he just pays me in cassettes. And so it's really fun. It's like I've got all these cassettes now in my garage, and there's something cool about the novelty of it. Like yeah. I have these boxes of like, you know, and he does new covers for them and stuff, and they look really good and they sound good because they get that little tape compression that it does. Because cassettes actually have a really nice sound yeah. if they work. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. The problem is they don't work that long. You know, sooner or later, like blah, 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 you know, whatever they do. But uh, I do do that. But. Um, he does ask every time Livewagon does something, he says, well, what about that? And I go, well, I, you know, I mean, I don't know if I want to do it or not. Mm -hmm. They probably would, but again, they're just so cool. I could probably just say, but you know, I, don't, I try not to be imposed. <laughs> but yeah, it's funny that I, I don't think many people do do that. The label I have does digital only. We just have a kind of clause in the contract that we do with bands. We're artists, you know, because I just do songwriters. It's just kind of a, you can print vinyl with anyone you want. You can self-print, whatever. All you have to do is give me one copy. And I love that. Because, you know, I mean, people don't really just want to do digital only. But we don't do CDs. We don't do any physical. Wow. And that's how we keep the price down. Wow. Really low. Um. Well, I am a huge movie buff, and I asked you with me first in the Gimme Gimmies that if you had to compare your band to a movie, you said Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah, so, I guess that's what for, for Lagwagon, or Headwagon and the Angry be? Edge. What, what movie? No, I mean, I think maybe I, I, Headwagon and the Angry Edge would be better for the Gimmies. Oh, Hedwig now. Yeah, Hedwig. Uh, I'm going with Hedwig. I think I really, oh, yeah. it's, you know, you go to the go-to, you know, yeah, like Rocky yeah. Horror is like the oldest of the kind of, you know, horror, raw uh, music, theater, films, or whatever, but Hedwig's got way better songs. Mm -hmm. It's way cooler. It's way more punk, too. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Um, but all that's sort of silly, really, because the <laughs> song, songs in Hedwig are like good Bowie songs. Or yeah, like yeah. Crazy good. Oh, I don't know, Lag Wagon? Jesus, compared to a movie, let's see, it's got to be a Western, since we made Haas. Uh, the Good, Bad, and the Ugly, maybe? Ugly one. Yeah. I was going to say Tombstone, even, but Good, Bad, Tombstone. and the Ugly is good. I do like that yeah, one. Val Kilmer kills in that Yeah, movie. that's a, a Doc Holiday. Yeah. That's one of those uh, almost like shameful uh, loves, you know? Yes! I've seen that movie like 30 times. <laughs> yeah. It's like one of those movies like, I would say Twister, but you know those kind of movies that they come on TV, and you're like, ah, oh, this movie's terrible. And so they keep on watching. You watch the whole thing, and you're like, I really love this movie. Don't tell me. Yeah. But Tombstones. Yeah, it's a good one. Awesome. Tombstone, there you have it. Well, I mean, uh, Joey, if there's anything you want to say to the fans out there and to Fat Records, go right ahead. Love you guys. <laughs> Thanks for everything. Sorry we're getting so old. Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. Right on. It's all good. Cool. Well, thanks again, Joey. Hey, thanks for this interview. My pleasure. Man. Appreciate Thank it. You. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the interview I did with Joey from Lagwagon. If you want to check out my other interview with Joey with the Me First and Gimme Gimmies, just click right here. And please, if you like what we do and help support the Wheelers Weekend Jams community, just go to our new Patreon page right down here. Wheelers Weekend Jams, Wheelers Weekend Jams.